And good morning. Welcome to today's small business webinar. My name is Paul LaChapelle. I'm with Montana State University, and I'm very happy to welcome you all to our webinar this morning. Uh, our webinar series is sponsored by the Small Business Development Centers um, here in Montana, Montana Department of Commerce, and the U.S. Small Business uh, Administration in cooperation with uh, MEDA, the Montana Economic Developers Association, and the Great Falls uh, Montana Development Authority. Um, we are uh, recording uh, today's uh, webinar, and I'll be providing the uh, webinar link uh, in just a few days uh, after we get that uh, information processed. I'll send the uh, archive link uh, via our listserv, and we'll be posting it also on our extension um, uh, web page and uh, uh, Jason with uh, um, uh, Great Falls uh, Montana Development Authority will also be um, posting that on his page. Um, we also have a Q&A uh, you can see at the bottom of the uh, screen there and our presenters today have uh, asked that you uh, you can ask questions um, during the presentation but uh, prefer to take questions at the end so feel free to type those uh, in the Q&A section there uh, in the pod uh, in the lower left uh, screen um, and um, and uh, we'll, we'll get those questions or comments addressed um, at the end of the presentation. Uh, so with that, it is my pleasure to introduce today's uh, speakers, uh, Darby Rich and um, Myra Baki from uh, Douglas Wilson uh, and Company PC. And they're gonna be talking about uh, tax law and the top 10 tax law changes for small businesses. So with that, uh, Darby, I'll say thank you for joining us today and take it away. Okay, thank you so much, Paul, for this opportunity. Um, and good morning, everyone. Uh, my name, as Paul said, is Darby Rich, and I'm a CPA here and a tax manager at Douglas Wilson & Company. And also here with me is Myra Baki. She is a tax shareholder here with Douglas Wilson & Company. She'll probably be helping me field some questions. Um, I thought I'd take this opportunity to give a little bit of a rundown on Douglas Wilson and Company in case some listeners weren't familiar with our, our firm. We are one of the oldest firms in Montana. It was established in 1913 by Douglas Wilson I, and he passed it on to his son, and he passed it on to his son, and Doug still pops in every now and then, but he's um, pretty much fully retired. Um, we are a full service CPA firm and we do auditing, tax prep, prep, bookkeeping, and payroll. We have a Great Falls office and that's where I'm located. We also have a Fort Benton office, but we mostly just service that during tax season. We have about 20 employees and um, yeah, we're very thankful for this opportunity. So this is my first live webinar, I will admit that. So bear with me while I um, try not to bore you to death with tax law. Um, I, my daughter listened to my presentation last night and her only comment was, well, mom, I'm 100% certain I do not want to be an accountant. So there you go. But um, hopefully you all get something out of this. And um, we'll go ahead and start with the top, top 10 tax law changes for small businesses. And the number one um, will be corporate tax rates. There is a huge tax drop for the corporate tax rates to, to a flat 21%. This replaces the old graduated brackets of 15, 25, 34, and 35. Um, this flat rate also applies to personal service corporations. Unfortunately, small corporations in the 15% bracket will actually have a tax increase. Myra did a calculation, and if you earn under $125,000 of corporate taxable income, you will pay more tax, which is a big bummer for our smaller corporations and our farm corporations. The corporate alternative minimum tax has been eliminated, and the dividends received deductions are reduced to 65% and 50%, previously at 80 and 70 for the corporations. All right, number two, qualified business income deduction. There has been a 
a lot of conversation and unfortunately a lot of confusion um, focused around this new deduction. It was the legislative intent to give non-corporate businesses a tax cut. Um, I don't know why they had to make it so, so difficult, but I'll try to give you a little bit of a rundown. Um, the deduction flows through onto your personal tax return. So for instance, if you're a partner in a partnership or a shareholder in an S corporation or a sole proprietor with a Schedule C or a Schedule F, um, this deduction will reduce your taxable income. The simple calculation, which it's far from simple, is um, going to be 20% of your qualified business income. And your qualified business income is a net amount of qualified items of income gain deduction loss connected with a qualified U.S. trader business. This income does not include investment income such as dividends, interest, short-term, and long-term capital gains and losses, annuities, and wages. This deduction does not apply to Montana, so that's going to be a, a big deal. So if you get a federal deduction for a qualified business income, it will not help you on your Montana tax return. There are some limitations. If your taxable income, it's not your AGI, it's your taxable income, exceeds $315,000 for married filing joint and $157,500 for all other taxpayers, there, your deduction will be limited. If you are an SSB, which is a specified service business, um, which would include accounting firms, the healthcare industry, law firms, consulting, athletics, financial and brokerage services, performing arts, um, you are limited in a, a bracket of $315,000 to $415,000 for married filing joint taxpayers and 157.5 to 207.5 for all other taxpayers. So if you're a specified service business and you're above a $415,000 range for married filing jointly, there will be no, no QBI deduction. If you're a, a, not an SSB, there will be limitations above that 315 threshold, it, depending on what type of business you are and depending on your your income limits, there'll be some, some thresholds that get to be very, very complicated. So this, this deduction is a very complex calculation and I highly recommend, there's not a lot of time left this year, but if you do have a, a business that you think you might qualify for, I would highly recommend contacting your tax advisor to see if there is anything that you can do to maximize your QBID and lower your tax. And we also have a flow chart that is downloaded, the Section 199 flow chart. It's from the AICPA website, and um, it's a really good example that you can look at to help you walk through to see whether you may qualify for this deduction or not. Okay, now we'll move on to number three in our top ten, depreciation. Bonus depreciation on the new... Tax law effective September 27, 2017 um, through December 31, 2022 has increased bonus depreciation to 100%. The prior law was 50%. It's also allowed for both new and, and used property, which is a big deal. It used to only be new property with the prior law. Um, there is a federal election for bonus depreciation on your tax return. If you opt out of it, which I would think more people will be opting out of it with the increased expensing of bonus in Section 179, and that's based on um, class. So three-year, five-year, seven-year property, you'll have to elect out by class. If you don't want to take it, yeah. And then Section 179 has increased to um, business owners can expense a million, which um, it was about... 500 ish, 500,000 last year. Um, so that has increased a lot as well. Oh, it is limited though to your business income. You cannot create an NOL with Section 179 expensing. So you can only Section 179 up to your net business taxable income. And the um, threshold there is 2.5 million of, of new of property placed in service. 
the, t the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act has also um, added some additional things that can be Section 179, roofs, heating, air conditioning, property alarm and security systems, they all now qualify for Section 179. Farm equipment and machinery, there's been a couple changes with that. Um, the recovery, peri recovery period, this is only for new original use property that was previously seven years can now be depreciated over five years. Um, farm property that has a, a depreciable life of three, five, seven, and 10 can now also be depreciated under the 200% declining balance method, and previously that was 150% declining balance. 15 to 20 year property though is still required uh, to use the 150 for the farm property. All right, passenger luxury autos. Oh, depreciation limits have increased under the um, 200, section 280F, the annual depreciation limits have went up substantially. You can see it in the slide there, 10,000 year one, 16,000 year two, 9,600 in year three, and 5,760 in, in year four. This is the annual limits have increased substantially from the old law. Much more favorable expensing here with vehicles. However, you have to be careful that this is based on 100% business use. So if you have personal use that, that needs to be reduced by that um, personal use percentage. All right, exciting stuff. So net operating losses. There are some big changes here in net operating loss land. The um, two year federal NOL carry back has been repealed for tax years ending in 2018. There is an exception here, if you're in the trader business of farming, they're still allowing you the two year carry back. And federal NOLs can also be carried forward indefinitely or until used up. Another change with NOLs is for losses arising in tax years beginning in 2018, the NOL deduction is now limited to 80% of taxable income. So if you have a lot of NOLs, from prior years, you can still deduct those at 100%, but if they're arising beginning in 2018, they'll be 80% limited. So moving forward, business owners who previously maybe haven't had to pay estimates, now maybe will need to with this new, new law. And Montana NOLs, for tax years beginning after December 31st, 2017, will still have the option to carry back three preceding tax years. And, and carry forward 10. And Montana is limiting the carry back at um, 500,000. All right, number five, we have um, like kind exchanges. And this is code section 1031 of the revenue code, in case you wanna read that this evening. And um, this is going to be limited now to only real property. So you will be no longer allowed to um, use a 1031 exchange on depreciable machinery and equipment. So for example, if you're trading in a vehicle or farm equipment in 2018, under the prior law, you could keep both of those assets on the depreciation schedule and not have a gain or loss. But with a new law, a gain or loss must be recognized on the old asset in the year of the trade-in. So whatever the trade-in price will be, that'll be the sales price for that asset and there'll be a gain or loss recognized on your 2018 return. All right, moving on to reduced meal and entertainment expenses. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is no longer allowing the deductibility of entertainment expenses. Prior law, 50% was allowed, and um, the new law is completely cutting it out this, this expense. So for instance, um, hunting trips, fishing trips, golf outings, 
vacations. That I think this is really going to hurt sales industries who like to entertain their clients, and none none of these expenses will will be deductible, which is which is a big bummer. Also, um, transportation, parking, and commuting benefits will no longer be deductible. So that's another cut. Probably won't affect Great Falls businesses too much or Montana businesses too much. And meals. Meals with clients, customers, partners, officers, and directors are still 50% deductible. And business travel meals are also still 50% deductible. Number seven on our top 10 list, interest expense and loss limitations. So if you have annual gross receipts above 25 million, this interest, business interest expense limitation will affect you. A lot of Montana businesses this won't affect. A lot of small businesses this won't affect. But if you do have annual gross receipts above 25 million, you're now going to have a limitation on your business interest expense of 30% of adjusted taxable income. And this is for tax years beginning after December 31st, 2017. There's also a new excessive business loss um, rule. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Acts established this for non-corporate taxpayers. And the threshold on these losses are 250 for single taxpayers and 500,000 for married filing jointly. And this is aggregate for all your businesses. So for example, if you have a single taxpayer, Schedule C taxpayer with a $350,000 loss, because of the $250,000 limitation, $100,000 of that loss will turn into an NOL carry forward. It'll be limited regardless of the if they have other income to offset that loss with. It will be limited to the 250. Number eight, accounting method changes. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act provides increased availability for cash method of accounting. There's a new gross receipts test for small businesses, and this is a 25 million test, dollar test. Um, it, it is, um, to qualify for this, you have to have average annual gross receipts for the three prior tax years that do not exceed 25 million. So it's the average for the, the three last prior years. The benefit of this is you qualify for cash method of accounting. You're not required to keep inventories or use percentage of completion method for small business construction contracts. And um, there's a Rev Proc that, that explains this very nicely. It's Rev Proc 2018-60. And it if you are a small business under the 25 million, it's very streamlined and the Form 3115 is an application for change in accounting method, and if you're a small business, this is waived, and you can simply check the box and cash method on your tax return and, and move on. So this is really, really nice for small businesses. Number nine, tax credits. There's a new employer credit for family and medical leave beginning in tax years after December 31st, 2017. There's a general business credit for wages paid to employees on leave. The credit equals 12.5% of wages paid if the payment is 50% of the wages normally paid to the employee while they were at work. The payroll expense, however, is going to be reduced by this credit. There's a new Opportunity Zone incentive. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act allows taxpayers who sell real property at a gain to roll over the gain into a qualified Opportunity Zone fund. This tax is then deferred or eliminated if the taxpayer holds the investment for five years. And um, there's actually a website on slide 13 here at irs.gov that has a list of the U.S. counties that qualify to establish these qualified opportunities opportunity zone funds and actually 25 of Montana counties qualify including Cascade County so if you're interested kind of fun for all you savvy investors out there 
Number 10, just some random notes. The DPAD deduction, the domestic production activities deduction under code section 199 has been eliminated with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. And um, this is just something Myra and I thought would be, be good to bring up. The de minimis safe harbor capitalization election is a yearly election made on business tax returns. And it allows you to expense tangible personal property, material supplies, and other assets whose individual cost does not exceed 2,500. The 2,500 threshold, I believe, started in 2015. But um, do have a written capitalization policy in place if you're, you're going to make this election, but it makes it a lot easier to, to expense items and not have to capitalize those. And we do have a, um, an example of a capitalization policy if, if your business does not have one in place. So, so there you go. That's the top 10 changes for small businesses. And um, thank you for attending today. And it doesn't look like we have any any questions. I'll maybe give everybody a minute to to type in a question if they have. Thanks, one. Darby. I can see some uh, Jason's typing there, and uh, I'll just remind um, our uh, attendees that uh, Darby did mention that um, there's some files to download. Um, you can just um, just above the Q and A box, you can see a file download box. You can just highlight. Um, those files, they're, they're uh, PDFs um, that Darby had mentioned, and um, you can just click on the, the download file button, and um, those will just download onto your computer. So, um, and Darby, you might want to mention you, um, you've got a couple of files there that, that you're providing. Um, do you want to talk in a little bit more detail um, while Jason is, is getting a question up there uh, about what those files are? Well, the... The first file is the flowchart that I talked about, the Section 199A, the Qualified Business Income Deduction flowchart um, from the AICPA website. That's the first file there. And then the second file is the presentation itself, if they want to print that out for their reference. Great. And well, Jason had a question. Are there any reasons why a business owner may want to convert from one type of a legal entity to another? to capitalize on tax impacts. I think that it would depend on, of course, the business. There had been a lot of talk of whether a C corporation should go to an S corporation, and all the examples, or vice versa, that I had seen was that it's really not going to be, be very beneficial, especially with the, um, ta the Q bid on the, the S corp side and then the lower tax brackets on the corp side. Um, plus, this is going to most likely be a temporary temporary thing. So, um, But there is lots of information out there regarding, regarding that. Yeah, most of what we've seen is, is no. Don't, don't do the change from a C corp or from an S corp to a C or a C to an S, vice versa. There is some other things you could do, though to um, increase your qualified business income deduction. Well, it really depends, um, Jason asks, such as, it really depends on what type of entity you are, whether you're a S corporation, whether you're a Schedule C, but possibly, and your level of income. But for instance, um, lowering your income somehow through maybe a qualified retirement plan, or something to stay below that $315,000 threshold, especially if you are a SSB service business, and possibly increasing wages if you are above the threshold, because wages impact, once you're above the 315, 157.5 thresholds, your wages will impact the amount of your deduction. But that definitely is something that you want to visit with your tax advisor who knows who knows your um, business. Great, and I see Jason is typing again. Um, Darby, maybe while he's uh, getting another question up uh, or comment, um, can you offer um, some information about where small business owners and, and others can go for free uh, information? Is there a place that um, that individuals can go to, uh, to, to get information without 
having to uh, you know to pay somebody for for um, you know uh, the services um, any kind of a, a state agency or does your um, does your firm offer uh, any any kind of uh, consulting um, we I would have to look into do you know anywhere Myra that has free small business planning that's something I'd, I'd have to look into I, I hadn't thought about that we do do consultations here one one free consultation that was hosted in Pumpkin Hill um, Jason had also asked is your opinion what is the most important question to ask in tax planning um, about about your business probably definitely would be this qualified business income deduction and and if they're going to qualify what they can do to qualify and how they can decrease increase their deduction and decrease their um, tax liability with the cupid any other questions for darby please type them in the q a Darby, any last uh, words, statements, comments, uh, anything you'd like to leave us with as we're thinking about the end of the year here and transitioning into 2019? Um, just thank you so much for, for the opportunity. And um, yeah, definitely there's a few weeks left in the tax year. I would definitely maybe give your, your CPA or your tax preparer a call to see if there's anything you can do to, to minimize your your 2018 tax liability. There's a lot going on. This tax, what's in job taxes, is, is is huge, and it's definitely worth visiting with your your advisor on. All right, that's great. Um, I don't see any other questions um, popping up. Uh, so, Darby, this might be a good time to say thank you very much for your time and the great information. Uh, great job um, uh, making uh, this information. Um, easy to understand and um, again we'll be uh, sharing the uh, the recording link uh, via our listserv and on on the website and if there are no other uh, questions or comments uh, Jason's just saying thank you um, he'll also be sending out some evaluations to those who registered prior to the workshop so stay tuned for uh, uh, communication from Jason with that again I'll say thank you to to, uh, so to Darby and Myra and um, Jason, of course, for all your help um, on your end, and I'll wish everybody a, a happy day, a happy December, and a, a happy new year. We'll be uh, continuing our webinar series in 2019 and uh, sending out more information uh, as we line up our presenters um, in, for the coming months. So with that, thanks, everybody. Have a good day.